Hello, Internet. Um, I'm about to hop on a bus to go see the launch pad and a few other awesome stuff um, where the launch will hopefully be taking place tomorrow. So, super excited. Oh! Only for you. You won't have turned it off. You know, I, I couldn't care either way. I'm very easygoing. Uh, Carrie Callahan? Yep. Yes? Yes. That was a yes. Here for about 22 years, I was a NASA quality engineer on the Space Shuttle program. I've done over 110 launches just on the Space Shuttle program. I volunteered to come out here and do this. How many first timers we got here? Good enough. All right. Okay. This is a crawler up here. It's for sale. No, not really. <laughs> All joking aside, we had dollar. one technician out here put it on Craigslist for sale the day we quit flying. NASA did not take it kindly. It's got it's got one of our three MLPs on top of it right now. Um, we were doing some testing with it. These these crawlers have now been modified. It takes a crew of 20 to operate one of these. Uh, the fastest it will go is t is two miles an hour. I think 1.2 million he asked for it. 1.2 million? That seems that's, underpriced. That's the security visit to the young man at home. Do you deliver? He was already laid off, so he had nothing to lose. Okay, this is the crawl away right here. This thing's about, the, the rock bed in it is about 8 feet thick. Okay, different grades of, of different rock gravel. The top eight inches is, is, a, is a river rock out of uh, Alabama, Mississippi area, and it crushes. It's like a cushion on the crawler. Uh, anytime it walk, the crawler comes across concrete or, or uh, pavement, we put plywood down to keep from cracking the, the, the cleats. We're not worried too much about the stuff, but it, it won't get up inside the cleats here. We water it down real good when we come across it. And then after we come across it one time, we've got another tractor that comes along and fluffs it back up. We'll use it like that maybe for about two years and then we'll take that top layer back off, replace it. This is the latest layer right there. We just redid it and it's good for a couple more years. This is also where the first shuttle was launched off of and the last shuttle. This pad's got a lot of history on it. It's basically intact from what the shuttle days that did look were. Uh, SpaceX has now leased it for 10 years. I have no idea what they're gonna use it for. <laughs> Well, I don't understand SpaceX is going to use it for their heavy lift. Uh, I'm not sure what will be what that'll look like. Sweet. I want one. What would you do with that? I, I want rockets. <laughs> My house would be the best on Fourth of July. That's fair. Or the worst. <laughs> the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. As I mentioned yesterday on our tour, um, Kennedy Space Center is an overlay with the uh, Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge. There are uh, tons of wild animals that do live out here, and there's lots of open space. There's over 500 different species that live out here, um, and they have a fairly uh, free range of the lands out here. Uh, we only wake them up every so often with a little bit of a launching going on, so uh, we do try to give them the right away as much as possible. So uh, do keep your eyes peeled out here. There, there are turtles and gators and birds and wild boar and all sorts of other animals out here. This is probably the, I think from what I understand, this is one of the largest scrub jay habitats in the world. They're a real weird little bird. I mean, they've got their own territory and they won't cross into somebody else's. Uh, anytime we even make, think about cutting a tree down or trimming a bush, we got to go through the, uh, the wildlife people to do so. They're, they're real sticky about what we do out here, so which is understandable. Uh, when we were launching the shuttles, we've got, we got feral hogs out here, which left over from when the uh, uh, settlers were out here growing pineapple and uh, oranges and grapefruits and stuff like that. Uh, we had a lot of problems with the vultures, so to keep the vulture, we ran into one of them on launch, bounced one off the nose of the shuttle. So what they did is they started catching, they would catch about a half a dozen hogs, take them over on the river, cut them up, make barbecue out of them, make them good and rotting, 
and during that time frame, they were on all the buzzers were over eating barbecue, and we were launching. So that's that's a no, that's a true story. Trust me. Uh, they one one buzzer to find a dead carcass, they would all be on it. So they'd be 200 buzzers over on the on the riverside eating, and we were launching. We go, yeah, we're out of here. Do get up here just to let everybody know. Um, this is a photography restricted area. We have made special arrangements though for there to be five points along the tour where photography will be allowed. So we do kindly ask for your utter cooperation in making sure that we only take photos at the five spots that we've arranged for. And the reason for why this is a photography restricted area um, this is an area that has uh, things that are subject to ITAR, which is the International Trafficking of Arms Regulations. So and again, this facility has the Delta IV rocket, so you'll use hashtag Delta IV. And the vehicle that you'll be seeing is EFT-1, so that's hashtag EFT-1. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm here. I'll have a gaggle of volunteers that all have ULA shirts, so you're welcome to ask them any questions. We'll give you a quick safety briefing and a quick overview of the HIF, and then we'll go inside and have some fun. We processed the, the uh, Delta rocket in a horizontal configuration. Um, this floor in here is one of the flattest surfaces in the world. It does not deviate more than three eighths of an inch throughout the entire floor. We have two bays in here that we can process a Delta Heavy in each of the bays. Uh, you will see the Delta Heavy in, in bay number one today. As you guys know, United Launch Alliance is a joint venture between the Boeing Company and uh, Lockheed Martin. It was formed December 1st, 2006. Inside the Horizontal Integration Building and looking at the Delta IV uh, rockets, which is huge! Holy crap! <laughs> Delta IV rocket? Oh my goodness. Rockets are a lot bigger, super close up. Like, I'm pretty sure I could easily probably put two of me in the, the exhaust. It's actually three rockets bolted together. We normally launch one rocket at a time, but in this configuration, it's three rockets bolted together. If you're looking at the RS-68 engine, made by Aerojet, and you have three of them. They each put out over 700,000 pounds of thrust, so when we light this baby, it's going to be 2.1 million pounds of thrust. Wow. No contest. This engine, we have glass windows. That's so the monkeys can look out the window when we launch them. Oh, <laughs> oh no! The windows are there so that when we're doing testing, the engineers can look through the windows so uh, they can see that everything is working properly. We do put flight doors on. We will put real doors on there when we launch. So there won't be any windows. There will be, No, there will be no windows. <laughs> So this is the launch mount unit, this gray piece, this is what we call a launch mount unit. That is what actually mounts to the launch pad, and the rocket is attached to the launch mount unit. So when we launch, the rocket actually separates from the launch mount unit, and the launch mount unit stays fixed to the pad. Um, this vehicle, I want you guys to be aware, this is the Orion spacecraft. It will be launching December 4th between 7.04 and 9.44 in the morning. We will actually be rolling it out to the pad on the 29th of September. Um, it will actually come out of the uh, north end of the building here, come right out here on this roadway, and go right out to the pad. Um, it takes about 40 minutes. Let me give you guys a little sneak peek of uh, the, the rocket that will be used on EFT-1, which is Exploration Flight Test 1, that will be happening uh, this December. If you guys want to know more about Orion, you can always go online to nasa.gov slash Orion, or you can find them on social media. They're at NASA underscore Orion. Do not touch the walls. Please do not touch the bricks that you're standing on. They are uh, made of uh, severe uh, flame retardant uh, material, and uh, that would be probably ill-advisable to go ahead and touch those sorts of things. Uh, my name is Jose Perez. I'm the uh, senior project manager for the ground development and uh, operation uh, directorate here at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Uh, my responsibility has been since uh, 2005, basically the development of this pad, first for Constellation, now for SLS. Uh, if you look obviously to the other pad, pad A, 
on your right, you know, uh, you will see there's a tremendous difference between bad A and this bad B. Um, the, the, the main reason is that bad B is based on a, what we call a clean pad concept. It's, it's, it's based on a clean pad concept, which means that uh, the rocket will be running with the uh, basically launch tower on the mobile launcher. Before for uh, shuttle, if you remember, the orbiter basically came here and all connections were done here. Uh, for the new SLS rocket, all connections are going to be done at the uh, VAB. And, and uh, that will save us a lot of time. Now, uh, we're gonna get out and uh, basically I will try to take them, take you guys as close as I can to the flame trench and talk to you about all the work we have been doing here, okay? So we are standing on the actual launch pad. That is happening. I'm standing on a launch pad. And that's why I'm here. Fall over. Holy. Uh, before before uh, we remove it, there used to be a flame deflector over here. Uh, the flame deflector obviously is used to deflect the flame once the rocket or, or the orbiter, uh, in, in which case, uh, came out. Uh, as you can see, for the new program, we're going to be uh, designing and building a new flame deflector that's going to be completely different from what the old deflector used to be. That was a beam, or an upside down Yeah, the, uh, the, the one for, for shuttle was basically symmetrical, and, and it was lined with uh, cementious material called fondal fire. The new one for the SLS rocket is going to be one side. Uh, steel plates because uh, all the all the uh, we were able to put all the rockets to make sure all the exhaust was going to go to the north so the, the south side of the flame deflector basically is going to be open we don't we don't need the south side of the flame deflector so there used to be bricks here from Apollo <laughs> I know right and they're standing on a launch pad NASA's really awesome it's that song from Doug, yeah. Don't know why I'm singing. Because I'm really excited, that's what I'm singing. You guys, look at this. I could turn in the channel that we're getting data from, and I can see all the weather system at different levels. We're passing right now the, uh, the sphere that holds the liquid hydrogen. Uh, the rocket uses liquid hydrogen, liquid uh, oxygen. This, this sphere obviously is for liquid hydrogen. It has been refurbished. We're doing a lot of work on it right now. So the tall, those tall towers that we saw um, are for lightning strikes. Um, they are actually taller than the tallest rocket that would be shot, uh, launched there. Um, and so far they haven't had anything. Um, actually hit the rocket so no we don't do we don't do anything special. since then uh, oh, apparently before there's a lot of trouble a lot of this is so ridiculously awesome <sighs> oh my god you guys we're here at the spacex launch pad this will be what we hopefully get to see take off later today slash early tomorrow morning weather permitting you can see the rocket Right there. So awesome. They don't let us go. I'd love to give you a better view of it, but they're not letting us go any further than those lovely little cones. As you know, it's a hazard to be too close to the flame trench, um, or too downwind of the flame trench, I should say. Heading back to the press site. So. 
fingers crossed, all things go well, and the uh, launch happens tonight slash tomorrow morning. And I hope to see you there. Bye, guys.